So uh, before we get started, I'm Neil McDonald. I'm the president of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce. I do these LinkedIn Lives daily at noon, business days, um, in order to talk to you about process and procedures that'll lead to success in the federal market. I spent uh, 20 years as a small business owner, two different co successful companies um, in the federal market. And since 2018, I've been teaching people just like you that government contracting is not a secret, it's just a process. And if you follow that process from A to Z, you'll achieve the success you expect, the outcome you expect from a process. Um, so today we're going to talk about the process of understanding how does no like and trust fit into our sales um, life cycle. And in the federal space, I just want to share my uh, the way I describe federal sales is it has three distinct phases. Basically, it has business development, capture and proposals. And so we're going to um, dive into that in today's call. I want to talk to you about a myth related to no like and trust right? The whole uh, concept that's out there. And then um, I want to share with, with you a story about uh, uh, a particular contract that I won that is applicable to today's lesson related to people not buying um, from people who they know, like, and trust, right? They, they buy from uh, people who write good winning proposals. If you, if you watch my other video, I talk about winning proposal scores. Uh, that's what wins proposals is a good proposal. And then the last thing I want to talk about is how do you actually use the concept of no like and trust in there? Excuse me. So the first thing I want to just mention is that um, when you think about no like and trust, there's a lot of people out there that will say people only buy. I don't know why I'm using quotes, right? People only buy from those they know, like and trust. In fact, I say that all the time. But the reality is that's a commercial side way to sales. In the commercial side, people definitely do buy from who they know, like, and trust. I've gone after uh, large contracts with like multi-million dollar contracts on the com uh, commercial side. And I've known the, uh, the, the focuses of power, uh, the head of the IT department, et cetera. And they're the ones that go, you know what, Neil, I like your company. I, I trust you. Um, and I know you guys, obviously. And so I'm just going to go with you guys. Right? They can do anything they want in a commercial company. Um, some of them have different guidelines for how they award contracts, but basically they can do anything they want. On the federal side, it's completely different. Right? There's this um, misunderstanding, I think, sometimes when you hear people like me say people buy from those they know, like, and trust. Um, and, and I in no way mean to, to uh, challenge those people out there who are saying that. Um, I want to clarify what we mean because I say it as well. Uh, when we say that people know, like, and uh, people buy from those we know, like, and trust in the federal side, that is earlier in the life cycle, right? So think shift left or this case, depending on the video, right? There's proposal, then there's capture, then there's business development. As you go from proposal to capture to, to business development, you're shifting left. You're learning about an opportunity earlier. You're engaging with the customer earlier. You're chasing an opportunity earlier. And so the more you go to the left, the more no like and trust comes up. And let me just pause. What does it mean when we say they know you, they like you, and they trust you? Um, so uh, let's just use me as an example to you. I don't know how many of you who are watching this video know, like, and trust me. I know that almost all of you know me, right? Theoretically, you came to this because, well, some of you might have just clicked on it because LinkedIn said you're live, but most of you know who I am. You know that I do this stuff with the GovCon Chamber. I give, give, give to the uh, to the industry, to community. And so you know me. Some of you even uh, like me. Most of you trust me. In fact, some of you might trust me more than you like me. Um, but because I've been putting this content out, because I come to you every day, uh, because I do webinars with different organizations like PTAX or uh, Department of Energy or Labor or something, I've built up this visibility throughout the industry in the government contracting world where people can begin to know me and determine whether they like me and trust me. And so um, knowing me is just an awareness thing. You want as many people to know you. And then you, from my standpoint, even though it's no like and trust, I really believe that the trust part is what comes next. And then the like part comes after that. I want people to trust me that when you listen to me talk about a government contracting tip, for example, that you can trust that what I'm saying 
um, is a valid suggestion for improving the process. And um, when you uh, when you move forward and you have trust, then you can get like. Uh, I had a conversation this morning with a um, another small business, and I was talking to them about my opinion, right? A lot of this stuff I share as recommendations, but I always couch it with, it's my opinions because there are other people who might have different ways of looking at it. But I believe that professional friendships could should come after you establish a professional relationship. And so what I mean is I want to get in. I don't need the customer to like me. I don't need you to like me. What I need is for you to trust me. What I need is for you to believe that I can solve your problem. What you might need is for your customer to trust that you can help them with their mission, the agency mission. Um, and then as we trust and work together, a friendship might develop. And so to me, that's more the like part. But either way, um, I know you, I like you, and I trust you is a fundamental way of measuring, am I building a relationship out there? Do these people know who I am? Do they like who they're running into, right? Do we have a, a, a basic chemistry or a way of interacting um, that makes us want to come back and have more meetings together, et cetera? And then do you trust me? Obviously, trust, again, I've been driving home is a big one. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out as it relates to this myth of the no like, and trust is uh, many of you have heard of the good old boy system, right? I actually don't believe in it. Now, it could be because of who I am, right? But I also don't believe in it because I refuse to accept that there's something in place that will prevent me from getting into where I want to go. So maybe I look at the good old boy system as just something that needs to be knocked down. But um, the reality is the good old boy system is just one uh, perception of what's going on uh, at an organization. So I'll use one example is that um, I hear about uh, somewhere in the Navy, and I'll just use the Navy because I like him so much, I'm going to beat him up for a second. Um, somewhere in the Navy, uh, a, a command within the Navy favors large businesses, even though opportunities absolutely should go to small. So they're like five or $10 million opportunities. Those should 100% go to small. But somehow or another, the good old boy system allows the largest to push them in there. And if I accept the good old boy system, then what I'm accepting is that um, relationships are the only determination for how the government's gonna acquire something, how they're gonna buy what we sell. But if I don't accept the good old boy system, if I don't accept that the government buys from who they um, know, like, and trust, and instead I look at it as just a process, then I look at this and I say, well, I'm a hub zone and I'm trying to get into that agency. Then am I doing the work to find 20 other qualified, not kind of qualified, but qualified hub zones that all have five and $10 million in revenue streams or whatever that do this work, writing to the government and saying, we can do it, giving the government everything they need to set something aside. That's how I would counter the good old boy system. That's how I would counter this uh, whole concept of, well, the government knows, likes, and trusts Booz Allen, right? Or whoever, Lockheed. Um, they, they're just going to go with them. They've, they've always been there. I'm like, you know, if it was a rocket ship or a battleship, um, then that would make sense. But if it's data analytics, if it's cleaning the, the bathrooms or something, right? None of that stuff is rocket science and all of it can come down to small. And so I push it. Anyways, that's a long way of going into the myth, right? This myth that um, people need to know, like, and um, trust you in order to buy. In a second, I'm going to talk about where know, like, and trust really will help you. And, and just to give you a, a, a teaser into that topic I want to share, uh, people do proactively get engaged with you when they know, like, and trust you in the business development and in the capture phase. And so that's what I want to talk to you about. Stop thinking about contracts are awarded to people they know, like, and trust and start thinking about uh, capture is more successful. Business development is more successful with people uh, when the buyer knows, likes, and trusts you. So I'm going to come to that in a second. I wanted to tell you a story about um, me and a, like a $20 million opportunity I went after and won in the Department of Veterans Affairs in my last company. And this company, I if, if you just listen to the way that people sometimes just say things happen, I should not have won. My company should not have won. Um, and the reason is, is because this was at the national level of VA and we had never played at the national level of VA. We had been doing work for the Department of Veterans Affairs for five, six years. Um, down at the lower levels, but at the national level it was a whole different arena. So we worked at the hospital and the network or visit levels, if you understand the VA structure. 
And we were going after this opportunity in the VA that um, people would have said we didn't have a good shot at winning. Fortunately, I don't believe those things. I don't believe anything that's set in stone. I'm like, I'm pushing through. And my team believed the same thing. We believed we were the best choice for the government. And it was our job to help them understand that. And so um, anyways, the companies that we were going up to were all qualified and competing at or playing at that national level. But the one in particular that should have made us just walk away and say, oh, we can never win this was the incumbent. The incumbent was going after this work, but it wasn't just the incumbent. The incumbent had on their um, uh, team, the prime had in their uh, team of employees and staff, the wife of the director, the, the GS-15, who was running the department, this project would have gone in. So he was the final decision maker. Now, the thing you got to understand about the government and what I love about the federal government is that the federal government plays by rules. They're all ethical. This guy recused himself. He's like, well, I can't be in that part. But even if he's not in there, it was the incumbent. His wife was working there and she had been working on the previous contract. So intimate knowledge of the customer, I mean, literally, but intimate knowledge of the requirements and um, uh, experience in there. You should have thought they would be a shoe in but we beat them out. And the reason we beat them out is because we came with a better look at what they wanted. We had experience in the field where none of these people playing at the national level did. Um, they were always focused on top down solutions. And what we were was uh, bottom up requirements, bottom up needs. And that brought a whole new way of looking when the evaluation committee looked at it. And so um, even this, this gentleman who was the director of the, the program office, he's not the only decision maker, even if he didn't recuse himself. There's a whole team that are in there during proposal evaluation. And so all of these people op operate completely above board. It's an ethical environment. In the federal government, the way procurement's done, it's done by a team and they evaluate the proposals. Are the proposals winning proposals at a price we can afford? Good, they go in this pile and we pick one. It's not, is Neil's in there? Oh, let's pull Neil's out, right? And so, in here, when you think about winning a proposal is when people know, like, and trust you, um, that's not really accurate. The accurate statement is uh, you can learn a lot about your capture activity and business development activity when you begin to develop relationships where, with people that know, like, and trust you. So I'm going to come to that third bullet in a second. But I did want to ask you a, a quick question. One, Hopefully, let me know if this is making sense. If it is, give it a thumbs up or something or just wave at me, raise your hand. Um, but I did want to talk about know, like, and trust, right? You're here, and I work with a lot of people, government and, and uh, prime contractors, right? Uh, small and large prime contractors. I want to know you. Do me a favor and put in the chat or comments your website. If you put your um, website in, I will take the time after this to go look at it, understand what you do. I'm not promising I'll make an introduction, but I am promising this. If you put it in, I will become a little bit more aware. I will begin to know you more. Um, at, I'm not trying to like and trust you at the moment, right? Here, I just want to know of you because I just worked with an 8A Stars 3 company this morning. I had a conversation with them. And uh, if they need uh, a subcontractor, a teammate like you, and I know who you are, then I'll be able to do that. Um, and, you know, this company, ironically, the reason I was talking to them is because potentially I might want to introduce them to my customer. So it's a whole good world. Put your website in. I'll go take a look at it. Um, okay, so I'm going to look uh, really quick. I'm going to look down here, just looking at my watch. I want to come into where do you uh, where do you want to put in place this idea of know, like, and trust? Um, people talk, people work with those they know, like, and trust, right? So uh, knowing is visibility, and then liking and trusting is once you've started to build the relationship. And so there's two main areas that know, like, and trust really fit into your federal sales activity. The first place is in business development. As you're doing business development, you're trying to get into an agency, understand an agency. You're um, trying to identify opportunities. You're trying to get into the program offices to have an influence conversations. Well, the way you do that is to begin to knock on doors and um, uh meet with people, et cetera. And so they begin to know you. There's many different ways you might be able to do this and I don't wanna to go too far into them. But an example is uh, you might attend an industry day, right? And in an industry day, you can learn who the program managers are or you can understand who some key points of contacts are. If you follow up with them and have a meeting with them, 
they're beginning to um, know you better, not just know your name and your company, but now they're beginning to know how you might fit in. If you can switch away from a, um, a two person, this is a weird way of me saying this, but what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to say adversarial, but soft, right? Um, you know how sometimes we might see somebody and we're kind of looking at each other, kind of looking at each other. Um, if you can move away from that early stage of a relationship to a stage where the conversation's now having, right? It's not just one-sided where you're there as their subordinate, but you're there as a, as a soundboard to them on their needs. So if you're talking to a program office, they move from knowing you to trusting you when they can begin to talk about their challenges, when they can begin to talk about their goals and you engage them with some of your industry expertise. That's where you're building this um, uh, relationship from just knowing me to trusting me, right? And if you have enough of these meetings and they're good meetings, then you will begin to get to that stage with trust. So the purpose of doing it in business development is so that it leads to two main outcomes. One is an, a, a constant awareness of opportunities as early as possible, right? So that's one thing you want. And the more people who are in the government target agency that know, like, and trust you, the more chances you will know about it long before the RFI drops. So that's the first thing. The second outcome is you want to be able to influence any of those requirements that are being talked about. Um, you can watch a previous video I did and I lay out how to shift left and this idea where there's formal market research, RFI, source of thought, and informal market research. Informal market research is when they're noodling an idea around. And if you can be in there and they know, like, and trust you, now you have the ability to influence an opportunity. Uh, you might be able to see this example in why larges might hire somebody who just came out of the Navy, just stick with the Navy today. Um, you know, let's say a captain retires out of the Navy, 24 years in the Navy, comes out, a large might recruit them, hire them, and basically they're going to send them back in. And one of the biggest reasons is because everybody already kind of knows, likes, and trusts this person who came out. And when she goes back in, she's able to have more conversations. She knows um, uh, how to, uh, what the priorities are for that organization, that command, et cetera. And so um, we can't all hire people out of there. And I actually don't think that's always the best thing because they have uh, that incumbentitis where they're just seeing it the old way. Um, but that point is though, you can do something similar where you just build yourself that relationship that somebody else might have. Anyways, let's slide over to capture on business development. I mean, uh, excuse me, capture on why it's important for people to know, like, and trust you in this phase of federal sales. So in this phase, you've got one opportunity. That's what capture is. One opportunity, and you're trying to shape it as best you can to be able to write a winning proposal, right? I talked a couple of days ago about a winning proposal score. All the elements that need to go in all the tasks, the action items you must do to make sure your proposal is a winning proposal. It's up to the government on whether they actually choose it, but you know that your proposal is a winning proposal. And that's the activity that is done during capture. Um, an example is you wanna diving further into this, right? You wanna understand a customer's pain points. Now, I did, I did another video about this in one of the LinkedIn lives where I just talked about challenges. Another day I talked about objectives. What are they running into? What are their pain points? What are they trying to achieve? Their goals, their objectives? How are they going to measure that? Um, understanding that is um, requires relationships because you can't just take a piece of paper out of Sam where the government wrote down, hey, these are our objectives, these are our challenges because every one of your competitors has that. So in, in sales, we wanna get ahead of our competitor in the federal space and captures when we do it. We get in and we start talking to the program office. I was just talking to a customer today or yesterday, about a hundred million dollar opportunity. And uh, they built a relationship up now enough with this key stakeholder um, at, at this agency that the, the person said, hey, let's get on a regular clip where you're calling me back and we can touch base about this opportunity. Cause it's in now the last, this one's a little longer, but it's in the last 12 months of the um, acquisition life cycle before the RFP drops, right? So this person is doing their job early but now they've got this focus of receptivity who can talk to them and guide them through the process. Um, but the way they were able to establish that is they got that person to know them, to like them and to trust them. Now that person is willing to share more information about what's going on. And it's not information they wouldn't share with anybody else who would call. The difference is they like them, 
So they're going to take the call. They're going to respond to the voicemail. Um, so anyways, that's a, a lot as I move through there. Um, I want to pause and look really quick to see if people have questions as we go along. Um, I'm going to tell one other story uh, that I want you to pay attention to. But um, before I do, if you have questions about what I'm saying, put them in the chat. Let me know if this is making sense. You know, right? If this is making sense, give it a thumbs up. Uh, I think you know a bit about us already, but as a reminder, experts, you know, <laughs> there you go. Hey, thanks. <coughs> um, yeah, so Larry makes a, an interesting point that um, that there is sometimes favoritism. There is time sometimes nepotism, racial bias, whatever you want to say, anything you want to say, I would agree. There's always some exception. Um, I hear people say about women-owned businesses, they'll complain about the designation because there's there's husbands who are running the business. There's SDVOs that are the same way. I'm like, you know what? The, the longer you focus on those exceptions, the longer you're ignoring the norm. The norm in the federal government is that the acquisition workforce is ethical and they do things the right way. What I would suggest is when you find the exception, get the hell away from them, like run far and fast and go find the agencies where you don't ever get that feeling that somebody's being um, unethical because I, I get those exceptions out of there. So just stay away from them. It's no different than if you have friends who are cruel to animals, get away from them. You know, like uh, you can't do anything about them. You can report them, but then get away and don't make them your friends and certainly don't keep hanging out with them. Um, I see the uh, websites in here. I appreciate it. I'm going to go check out the ones that are there. Um, okay. Looking just at the questions. I think, I don't think there's any others here. Um, good. Okay. So the last thing I, I just wanted to remind you, right, is when I think about uh, tips like these today, and I tr I'm trying to get even better at delivering LinkedIn tips of value that not only that you just come and hear about, right, but there's some action activity you could do or some aha moment. And the aha moment I want here is for you to think about this. Uh, the government does not buy from people they know, like, and trust. Inside of the government, and I think Judy Bratt or somebody like this says, and go look her up, she's great. Um, I think she says this, is that um, in the government, the buyers are just people. And I say this all the time, right? They mow the lawns, they're gotta go to a doctor appointment, blah, 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 they're just like us in a different job. And so, um, when you think about know, like, and trust, understand that you should not be focusing on getting a contracting officer to like you so much that they're going to miraculously drop contracts to you. Instead, you want the program office to know and like you so much that they discuss their challenges with you. They discuss their um, goals coming up in the, in the new requirement or just their general goals of what are out there and the, the ideal state of that relationship is when you can be uh, introducing them to new things they should be thinking about. An example is I'm working with somebody on Zero Trust where we want to go into commands and help them really understand what is Zero Trust and how should that matter at your level? Well, when we can build that trust with them and that they know and like us, obviously, um, then they will listen to us because we're the subject matter experts. We have proven that um, and they know, like, and trust us. So, Okay, um, I'm going to wrap up. I don't see any uh, any questions in there. I agree, Neil. Run from the non-ethical people. Yeah. Um, okay, I, I'm glad you're here. If you liked it, again, give it a thumbs up. Remember that I've done re uh, I've done like 70 of these. So if you're looking for more of this type of content, go take a look at our um, the replays on my profile. If you're not connected, connect with me. And remember, government contracting it's not a secret. It's just a process. I'll see you tomorrow's video.